So today's walk around is slightly different. We're at Thursby Lake and I'm with the owner, Tony. Now, this little lake is a little special gem and um, I'm quite looking forward to you showing me around it. Yeah, yeah. It's the Corp Lake and it's their day ticket lake. So, and as you can see, the sun is shining and it is looking nice and we are watching fish constantly just swimming up and down. So it's, we're a little bit distracted at the yeah, moment. Yeah, yeah. Um, so quickly, yep. how, how old is this lake? Tell us a little bit about it. So yeah, this one was dug in uh, 2013. Um, started off as a little play, place that we sort of quarried a bit of clay out of to seal up the other lakes. And, um, and then sort of, we ended up with two or three little pits that they'd excavated. And um, yeah, just decided sort of, uh, it looked prime to be able to link them all up and um, yeah, and uh, make another little lake out of it. Um, and then it was stocked sort of shortly after that, 2000 and I think, yeah, 2014. Uh, and that was with VS and Priory fish. Yep. Uh, we put about sort of 55 to 60 fish in here. Um, obviously over the years, we've taken a few out, added a few more back in. Um, and I think, yeah, we're sort of sat somewhere around about 55 in here now. Uh, and I think the lake's probably just about an acre and a quarter, acre and a half. Yep. Uh, five islands, lots of channels. Um, so uh, Lots yeah, of tiny make, holes. yeah, indeed, it makes for uh, some interesting fishing on here yeah. for sure. Um, the other lakes are definitely a bit more open than this one, whereas this is very much, you know, more intimate fishing. A lot of in the edge stalking, um, you know, little traps set in the channels. Um, but it's almost yeah. like you eat because of the islands and the the way it's all sort of shaped. You all get your own little water. Yeah, in there yeah. As well, so don't we've you? got eight swims on here, um, but we only allow four anglers at a time. Yeah. So. Um, I would almost say it's almost split into four areas as well. So if the guys that are coming on here are sensible about where they fish, they almost get their own piece of the lake yeah, yeah. without seeing almost another angler, um, which is quite nice. And it keeps the fish moving around as well. Um, and, and obviously gives the opportunity with the spare swims for a bit of stalking, um, yep. you know, so you can sort of uh, fish your area, but get some other little spots going as well when you're, when you're here. So. Nice, well, yeah. well we'll, we'll go over to the next swim and show you about. Yeah. So, um, so, so anglers could book this individually? Individually, um, as a day ticket, or if they go on, I believe, on the Catch app, if you book all four day tickets, it effectively gives you an exclusive. Yep. So if you're with, if there's two of you want to book the lake for, for the weekend, just between the two of you, you can go on there, book all four day tickets out, and then you have the whole lake to yourself. Yeah. Uh, and they can just, you can come out of here then and, you know, uh, enjoy the place, you know, without any other anglers, which yeah. is nice. You know? I, I mean, like, it's so, it's secluded here, isn't it? You're out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> in and the, the countryside. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. And the lake's stunning. Yeah. Especially on a day like today. For but sure. for a young lake, it looks so, like very well matured, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Well, obviously, hence the name, the cops. Yeah. It was um, there always was a coppice of trees out here, um, and a lot of the original oak trees on the islands yep. um, are where the old hedgerows used to be. So right. hence that's why it was a copse. So a lot of the trees were sort of left that were here, been here for years before yeah. the lake was actually dug, and then they were able to just dig around the trees and leave them. Um, which, you know, in turn then gives you a very established looking lake in a very short period yeah, of, of course, time. Yeah, yeah. Because you're not waiting for stuff to grow. It's, yeah. it's, it's already there, you know. And then as for the Norfolk Reeds and, uh, and everything else, they, um, they don't take very long to get, no, get going. They keep growing <laughs> as well, don't they? Now they're just a hassle trying to cut them back all the time and keep them in, you know, keep control of them. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, you've got, I mean, on each peg, obviously, you supply the landing nets, unhooking mats. Yes. That's all. Yeah, so they, everything. Got to bring so that. Anglers don't need to bring uh, anything like that, no. Um, we normally supply six sets out here on the cops, so there's plenty to sort of uh, to go around. Um, and that goes for all the other lakes as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, it's all good quality gear, and uh, we keep on top of it. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. And 55 fish then, so, and they go up to 35 pounds, don't they? Uh, about 35, yeah, maybe 36 at the right time of yep. the year. Um, I would say at present, it's probably half a dozen that go over 30 in here. Yep. Um, I would probably say half of what's left is, is 20 plus and the rest are high doubles. Um, so yeah, and there's some Plenty lovely fish in here, some fully scaled, some nice commons, like all sorts really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Proper mix of fish. We've got lower berry field, priories, yeah, and I think, as I said before, VS. So, and, and to be yeah. fair, I have just seen your album on the wall and I know you can, you can tell a good fish between yeah, the Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I've been lucky enough, obviously, having known Viv and Simon and, and Tom and Jez at Priory all for quite some time, I've you know, been able to hand pick pretty much all the fish for here. Yeah. Um, rather than getting given a batch of, say, 40 or 50 fish, it's been sort of 10 from here, 
10 from there and I've been able to go in the tanks and sort of pick out exactly what I'm looking for nice and then dropping them in so um, yeah the every, future is bright yeah everyone's unique yeah. and uh, everyone's uh, a little bit different which is what you want you yeah, know? So, yeah 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 So every peg I go to, it yep. looks like you could have 10 rods, but I know obviously you know the lake better than anybody. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, the reeds are screaming fish, but where, where's the hot spots here? <laughs> yeah, well, I would say the reeds, but obviously there's a big bunch of reeds. Um, there's a couple of little um, alcoves in the reeds. There's one just over here um, where there's a little bit of a cutback through, and there's another one over here where there's a couple of areas that the geese use to come in and out. Right. Um, now, obviously, they're obvious spots. If I'm going round on the bike, it's where I can feed, feed. where I feed a bit of pallet, um, and those spots have been cleared, and, and, and you'll find that it's absolutely rock hard right in front of those areas. So they're a good area, but to be honest, these, the, the fish are up and down. These reeds are like sort of three foot of water off the front of them. Nice. As long as it's clear. And, and it's presentable, then you will get bites all the way along, along yeah, the yeah. reed lines. But certainly those couple of areas would be my sort of starting point, my go-to. Or um, the one underneath well, our feet. Well, like we say, we've just seen one right underneath our feet. So I'm guessing if you bivvied up back by the fence, um, yeah, there's obviously an opportunity for one uh, yeah, right in front of the boards here. <laughs> I think the danger when you do these is like you step into a peg like this and you can tell it's the most popular peg on the one of the most popular pegs on the lake, can't yeah. you? It's um this is my favourite swim, I would almost say, on the whole complex. I don't know what it is about sitting in here, but it's just such a lovely swim. I think you can see a lot of the lake from here. Um, I'm just looking at the view over there. Yeah, you've got the country view of the countryside, but like from a fishing point of view, you can see sort of two-thirds of the lake really from this swim. Yeah, yeah. You've got umpteen features that you can fish to um you know i could sit here and say you've got the, you've got the bar between the, which we talked about from yeah. the other side there's two little plateaus on both ends of the island out here like little semi-circle bars where it's about two foot deep another connecting bar between the two islands it's quite <laughs> deep under the weeping willow and it's nice and clay under there and then we've got another bar that connects from the end of that island over to there um, and then in between us you've probably got the deepest bit of the lake where it drops into like six foot and then shallows back this way um, i mean they're going to be patrolling up and down that it, oh. yeah you could it's, it, it's one of those scenarios where you could quite easily fish 10 rods out of it <laughs> <laughs> um, this margin as well like they, they love it in here especially with the wind like you've got now sort of uh, that sort of southerly, that southeasterly wind, um, they get in really tight along here. Very shallow, but they, they, they really lovely. love yeah, to yeah. get in here. What about and, bait then? Are you, uh, so, so, you know, main, main tactics, what would you say? I would say sweet corn, holding chop boily, and, yeah. and pellet. Obviously, I feed them uh, Coppins uh, premium select pellets, yeah. which is like a very dark, sort of almost like a, looks like a halibut pellet. Um, I feed those in a six mil, so, I would sort of start the mix or a mix with, with some of those six mil pellets and then, yeah, half a tin of corn and then a good quality fish meal boilie. Yeah. Um, you know, and then I would introduce that into the mix in, in, in some crumb and some holes and, you know, and a few chops. And uh, that would sort of be my approach. Obviously, moving into the autumn, I'd probably sort of come more boilie approach, yeah. um, you know, uh, but again, I'd want to be fishing chops and some whole ones. Um, uh, but, uh, and then, yeah. I'd be fishing like a nice little uh, balance wafter or a, or a low line pop up over the top. Yeah. Um, you know, it is quite silty out here in the middle, so um, some of the places have got a bit of chod around. So it's you know, I think definitely something that settles down nice and gentle nice. on the bottom. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, to make sure it's presented. But well. you're catching on hard spots, soft spots. Yeah, really. exactly that. Yeah, you'll see them out here fizzing in the silt all the time um, here, through the middle area. I tend to find that with all these sort of clay ponds that I've got here. The, the, the edges of everything are very hard and stony. Yeah. And then the middle areas are much softer and siltier. You know, the carp mine out the, the, the down walls and the sloping banks and pull all that sort of silt and soft material out into the middle. Yeah. So, you know, if, if you were to walk around in your waders, you, it, it's very firm around the edges yeah. um, and then just gets softer as you work out into, into the middle. Um, but uh, yeah. You know, and it's the same on the islands as well. The, the island walls and the banks are very stony and firm. And then, yeah, dropping down into that sort of silt. The 
This is the uh, the step swim. Um, and you know what? With the amount of fish I've seen cruising up and down, this is probably one of my favourites. I know people are going to have their own little favourite parts of the lake. Yep. And, but this one, I've seen more traffic coming up and down. Up and down, than yeah. It almost reminds me of like a fishing a little canal. It's yep. very narrow. Um, but you've got access to the shallow bay up in the gate swim. And then the deep channel of the, the lake actually runs right through in front of the swim here. Right. And then through the gap here between the islands. So probably got five and a half, six foot of water here. Some of the deepest on the lake. And it runs the same depth right out through here. Great winter swim. They spend That's loads really. of time right in here in the winter. Um, but obviously it's got instant access to shallow areas. So if you get any warmth whatsoever, there's They're a little that. ledge that runs down the back of both of these islands here. They're south facing. So as soon as the sun comes up in the winter, it catches right in along the back nice. of these two islands here. So any fish that are sat here in this deep water, they can just lift out and, and hop up onto these little shelves. Yeah, yeah. And again, they can just migrate down into the corner here, into the shallow sort of bay by the gate swim as well. So, um, but yeah, access points, they can arrive from one, two, three, <laughs> four different areas, which is why I think there's always fish coming through, you know, through this swim, um, you know, and you never quite know really where you want to sort of target them to. Um, over by the fallen down log here is a particularly productive spot, yep, yep. Um, simply because you've got sort of almost two islands and, a, and, a, and a, a stubby bit of hedge and they can sort of come in three different ways like through there. Patrol, really, yeah, yeah, and it just sort of funnels them in. So um, a lot of fish definitely get caught there. And, and I know the guys catch them here on the, you know, just tied to the back of the islands on the little uh, the little clay shelf that you've got there. I think that comes out at about sort of maybe three or four foot. Uh, okay. And then it drops into the, the six foot channel here right in front of the swim. It is, it's a unique, it's, it's a unique lake, isn't it? It's mm. different. Yeah. Uh, very different, but also I'd love the fact that you just, it's, you can have 10 rods on each swim. Every swim. You, yeah, like, even, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't know where to chuck to. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I'll try and find the fish first, but... Try and find them, but when you actually get in the swim, you're it's... Like, yeah, what do yeah. you do? Like, you can have rods everywhere. Yeah, and all the swims are quite nice because every swim you've got, you know, five or six foot in an area, and also you've got a couple Shit. of foot, right. like, either on a bar or on a little shelf. So, um, you know, each swim enables you to sort of fish the different depths and, uh, yeah. you know, different sort of spots where they're likely to, to come into, like, you know, yeah. So, I'm going to have to ask the question, I've got to come back soon. When can, when can I get on? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, there's plenty of availability on the Cops Lake uh, throughout this year, um, both for day tickets and exclusive bookings. So, uh, yeah, you come back next week if you come, like. Come <laughs> here, I'm here. As long as the sun's shining, I'll be, I'll be coming yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. There's um, plenty of fish to go for as well. Lovely. So, um, yeah. Good stuff.